Good afternoon, everyone. Nice to be here today and share with you our journey to Ubuntu point zero. Now, I've got to come out of the closet right up front and, and say something, and that's I hate gaps. Um, gaps, <laughs> gaps in your teeth. I mean, it just doesn't look good. And maybe there's a, a valve we can do to sort that out. Um, gaps that are big canyons that you've got to cross. And you, you're on the one side, and there's a, a scrawny little bridge like this that you've got to get across. I don't do those sort of things so well. Gaps when you're trying to get into a train. Apparently, like 3,000 people fall in those holes every year. Um, th those are problems. But there are bigger gaps than those. There are gaps that make those gaps look like nothing. What about the huge digital divide that, that splits our world? We have incredible electronic things here, but we know even in our own continent, when you look at the lit up parts, there is a huge digital divide in Africa and between Africa and the West. What about the huge gap in wealth that exists? And we've spoken about that during the course of our conference today. The, the, the gap that exists between those that have got and those that don't. Two couples getting married, living in their homes. The, the gap is huge. But then there's another gap that we probably don't think about. And this one is more insidious in a lot of ways. And it's the knowledge gap. It's the gap between me who knows and you who don't. It's the gap between the students and and his lecturer, this gap between the people that have the information and the people that don't. And this is a gap that we believe if we can't get across it, we're going to battle to engage our students. We're going to battle to get the next generation to where we really need them to be. And so the question that we're probably left asking, is there a place of no gaps? That, that perfect gapless smile. Is there a place where we can find that gaps don't exist? And that really was the mission that we were on. Is there a place where streams of knowledge are flowing, where the sage and the student learn together? It's not the sage on the stage and the student down there. Where educators collaborate, not because the one knows more than the other, but because they're sharing what they know together. Where learning isn't just a destination, like it often is. Get the degree, pass the test. Learning's a journey. Is it possible to get to a place where our students, where our learners, where our educators are experiencing that? Well, that was the question that we had. And we said to ourselves, is there an utopia, this, this digital realm where, where we could all be together, where we could learn in this amazing way? We said, well, how could we find out? Well, we've got to go to the digital world. A message has been received. Oh, fantastic. Well, good news, because we sent our avatar and we sent him out into the digital world to see if he could answer these questions. Is he an utopia? Where is it? And how do we get there? And the good news is, he's just SMS Rose to say he's arrived and he's prepared to actually share some of this stuff with us. So, catch him through. Hi, my name is Crow's Quibble. I am an explorer. An explorer in the exciting world of Web 2.0. Craig and Rose sent me on a journey to see if I could find Itopia. Firstly I decided to travel back in time and see how students have been learning through the ages. I was interested to see what I could learn by taking a look at how we have progressed. It was a fascinating journey. Why don't you come along? Come and see how it turns out. But beware, it might not be what you expect. Right, well, thanks, Crows. He's a really busy man, and he's often out there, and I'm really glad he could stop by and share it with us. Well, you know, what's kind of interesting, Craig, is if you have a look at how we work and how it's changed over time, I mean, there are dramatic changes. So he must have seen really interesting changes in that exploration. He must have. Well, maybe we should ask him and see what sort of changes he's found. Take it away, Crows. I'm Rose. I found some really interesting things in my journey. I decided to travel through cyberspace and see how university students have learned over the ages. How has it changed? Check out these photos I came across in my travels. The oldest one I found was from 1823. Next I found a photo from the turn of the previous century, 1909. Moving on I landed in 1921 and popped into this university. 
1957 was my next stop as you can see here. And then to the flower power years of 1968. And of course I popped into some modern learning. The year 2010. Did you spot the huge changes that have taken place? Yeah, well, amazing. He, he traveled through time nearly 200 years, and there's no change. The lecture theaters look the same. The lecturers look the same. The st everything looks the same. 200 years, and, and he probably couldn't go back because I didn't have photos prior to that. But I think it still looked the same. There's no change. So I got to thinking about this, and I reckon... It's like this because this is how we like to learn. Students want to learn like that. It's, it's guaranteed. That's why. Is he trying to interfere again? No. Students have changed. They have changed how they connect, how they socialize. Today's students are called Generation Y students. They love connecting. They love being social. They love technology. Here are some students I met hanging out. Hi. I'm Crow's Quibble. How are you doing? I'm doing great, thanks. I'm traveling through cyberspace to find out how people learn nowadays. Cool. I'm glad you popped by. So what's the deal with this room? Why are you at lectures? Well, don't tell my lectures. But I find them so boring. What do you mean? Why are they boring? Well... I just don't learn like that. I prefer to learn in other ways. Like what? Sitting here in your room? This hardly seems like learning. Yeah, it is. Here I can listen to podcasts of my lectures. My friend records them on his phone. I also watch YouTube videos of stuff I'm learning. Or I discuss the work with my friends on Facebook. Wow. And all that from in your room? Yeah. Or outside in the park or in the cafeteria, or at the pool. I can learn anywhere really. Anywhere I can connect. Great. Thanks for that. It was really interesting. Bye. No problem. See you on Facebook. Bye. So actually the whole point is Generation Y students don't actually always want to work the way we used to. Uh, they're connecting students. They actually like to multitask. They actually do like to do things in a social context. And they enjoy developing knowledge based on the context that they're actually working in. But this raises another question. Is it maybe not the fact that we don't have the tools to allow us to teach in these kind of ways? Perhaps that's the challenge. Maybe Quibble can help out. Take it away. This is the amazing part. It's the Web 2.0 world. It's a world of tools that are all about collaboration, all about sharing, all about multimedia, from social networks, to video, to wikis, to blogs. All of these great tools are designed to support our modern generation student. Web 2.0 is Generation X. It's perfect for our students. Okay, well that to me is really interesting. So we, we've got this combo of things that are coming together. We've got Generation Y students who, who love to connect, love to engage. We've got Web 2.0 technology, the, the wikis and the YouTubes and all of those things which supports this connecting. And we've got a learning style, social constructivism, the, these styles and paradigms for learning that are so powerful. They're not about instructor and, and, and student. They're about learning together. Yet what is it? There's something missing that's not enabling us to reach this utopia. What is that missing piece that we're needing? And I'm hoping that Crow's Quibble has the answer because something is missing. A good to question. Together. What do we need to enable effective learning? Well, the answer is Ubuntu. Nelson Mandela defined Durban to like this. A traveler through a country would stop at a village, and he didn't hope to ask for food or for water. Once he stops, the people give him food, entertain him. Urban does not mean that people should not enrich themselves. The question therefore is, are you going to do so in order to enable the community around you to be able to improve? That is Nelson Mandela's definition of Urban too. 
and from my journeys I believe it holds the key to Utopia. The key is Ubuntu.0. That is what we need. So that's very interesting. So what we really are looking for is a philosophy that we call Ubuntu.0, where we, we take the strengths of this philosophy of Ubuntu, merge it with Web 2.0, and come up with something that's so powerful. It, that's about collaboration and not domination. It's about the strengths of all the people involved and not comparing our strengths and weaknesses. It's about knowledge, not about exerting power over people. It's about learning, not about instructing. And it's a totally different mindset that can be supported in the digital age in which we live. And so I, I thank Crow's Quibble because that's been absolutely useful. And I uh, really thank him on going on all those journeys. And You are welcome. I hope everyone enjoyed the journey. I am off now. Someone is tweeting me. See you later. Right. See yes. you later. Thank you. So actually what we're talking about is we're talking about a city of Ubuntu 2.0, and it's actually built with a series of blocks, and you choose these bricks that you're going to use. They could be tweets, they could be blogs, podcasts, avatars. It can even be based on your status updates, on your Facebook pages and others. But it's all about debates and engagement, and what's really critically important is we are all equal in this space. Yeah, and that's very interesting. And... A whole lot of lessons have emerged in our journey through cyberspace to try and find this Ubuntu 2.0 place. And the first lesson I think we've learned is about a worldview gap, that we have to change our worldview and understand that it's not about those who have and those who don't have. We create these divides, and as a result, when parties come together, it's always me who knows more and you who know less. And immediately, the person who knows less or has less is in a lower position. And so... Getting over this big divide is not so much digital, but it's actually a mental issue. The second lesson is, who has the answer? There can be lots of people that put up their hands with the answer. In fact, what is the question? Are we prepared to get involved in discussion where what is actually the right question? Sometimes 42 is the right answer for the meaning of life in the universe. And we can talk about it. Or is it as soon as the student suggests it, sorry, it's wrong. It's quantum mechanics or whatever it is. And, and so this brings us to the point is, is there one answer? If we want to arrive at a place where we can connect in a better way with the future generations of students, is there one answer? Is there one perfect place? Bad news, no. And this is something that we have to get used to. We live in a beta world. It's about construction that is always happening. It's a place for imperfect learners, imperfect teachers, with imperfect tools, but they bound together with an important philosophy. It's going to change. The platforms will change. The, the ways we, the tools we use will change. But if we accept that, we can explore such exciting possibilities in our engagements with our students and those of the future. And so we want to sit around this digital campfire, and it's a place where we learn and there's no judgment, there's, there's no assumptions. Everyone's got a reason for being there, and there might be different reasons, but everyone's welcome. And everyone comes to tell their own story. And everyone learns something, whether I am the lecturer or the student. And everyone leaves with what they've taken and they share it with someone else. And so Crow's Quibble's journey, that's our journey. That's the journey we've been experiencing. And the lessons that he's learned have been our lessons. And I think it brings us to this question, which is so key. Yeah, we've started on the search for Autopia. And the question is, is there an Autopia? No, there isn't. But what we propose is there's a journey. And the journey is this, a 6C map to Ubuntu. You come, you connect with us. Maybe you spend some time and you consume some things we provide. You feel able to then collaborate and actually contribute. And then you feel enabled to actually go off and create yourself and contribute to this ever-widening cycle and circle. So that's what we'd like to propose to you as a way of implementing that philosophy. And so things do change, but things only change if we move. We can say things haven't changed. They have changed. If you sit in the same place for 100 years and you say things don't change, you're spot on, they don't change. But if you get in a speeding rocket and look out the window, things do change, but it depends on whether we're going to do anything about it. And so it's a different place we're getting to. We're arriving at a different place. It's not the place we used to be at. It's a different place if we want it to be a different place. And that's the key lesson. And so... 
finally, we've got to understand that it's a journey to Ubuntu 2.0. It's very persistent. Stop. Craig and Rose, stop talking. You are doing exactly what you should not be doing. Look at the gap between you and the audience. Go sit down. If they want to learn, tell them to meet you in cyberspace. Thanks for coming. If you have any questions, visit me at my home www.nexted.info. See you on the other side. And remember, mind the gap. Bye. Yep, we've got to listen to him, and we've got to get down there with you. Thank you very much.